who am I? My name is Rogelio Jason Moore. If you can't pronounce my name, just call me Will. Uh, I am a solutions barista at Hash Rocket. Um, I have been uh, a Linux sysadmin, a software engineer, and tall for the longest time. Uh, I'm also not from around here. I'm from uh, Central America. In the, in the Central America, I went to Arkansas Tech uh, to, uh, in uh, just south of here, in uh, Russellville, Arkansas. When I first got there, I was born in El Salvador, by the way. Um, and I told this guy I was from Central America, and he was like, what do you mean, Nebraska? <laughs> <laughs> so no, not Nebraska. And actually, the, the, the geographic center of the U.S. is Lebanon, Kansas. Did anybody know that? Well, my family hails from Lebanon, you know, my grandparents, so, so there you go, we've come full circle. <laughs> I, I am from Central America, I guess. Uh, Twitter, email, blog, GitHub, and that's it for myself. Now, check this out. Medium turkey chili. <laughs> Medium crab bisque. <laughs> you didn't get any bread, just forget it, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, uh, I think you forgot my bread. Bread, two dollars extra. Two dollars? The one in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars! <laughs> no soup for you. Uh, so you may be wondering what the click has to do with today's talk. Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. So let's move on. Today's mission. No pseudo, the final frontier, to explore a near perfect development environment, to seek out cases for pseudo, to boldly go where no developer has gone before. Well, not really, but thank you. Pseudo uh, has its place, so let's just start, let's just get that out of the way. Pseudo um, has its place in the enterprise and multi user uh, environments. Uh, it allows you to run something like, you know, if you run this command sudo mysql status versus su-c mysql status, you'll see the difference that the top one, it says what the command was, who, who the user was that ran it. The, top, the bottom one says user fryer ran a command. We don't know what it is. So, you know, it's not, I mean, sudo is not inherently evil. Um, so, but, um, I mean, I, I use it to, to install, install trustworthy tools and stuff like that. Um, so you may be asking, why, why you know sudo, right? And the answer is, is simple. Uh, make files uh, can do very bad things. So if you're sudo making install something that you don't trust, it could definitely mess you up, right? Um, Part of the problem is most of us, and I think I see a sea of MacBooks everywhere here. So most of us are either using OS X or Ubuntu. I may have seen one Windows computer. Is there more? Two, maybe? Three? Yikes. All right. <laughs> this, this talk is not going to be very relevant to you. Um, but no worries. You know, we'll figure it out. You can run the SQLin or SiteLin or whatever you call it. Uh, the problem with OS X and Ubuntu is they, they don't work. Hello. Something. Ah, it's messing with my mind. So OS X and Ubuntu don't set a default root, uh, password for root, right? So then you're using a weak password um, for your sudo, which uh, again, you know, sudo can mess up a lot of stuff if you don't if you you don't know you know who made that stuff. Uh, it also this is the biggest thing really. It installs when you're sudo jamming installing something. It'll install something in your system Ruby, which you'll you'll see later what I'm talking about. It doesn't really make it compatible with RVM. 
Um, and also, it's not ideal uh, for homebrew. So, so here we go. So that's why I don't, I don't think sudo really belongs in your development environment. Really, I mean, you, you have to use sudo to install a lot of things in Ubuntu and stuff like that. Yes, but when you're talking about your, your isolating your your project in your development environment, uh, I don't think you really need it. So here it comes. Um, Debian and Ubuntu guys have apt. Uh, Gen2 peoples have portage. In Mac OS X, peoples had nothing really uh, for a while. We had uh, Mac ports, but that doesn't really count because it's a piece of crap. Um, so we have Homebrew, which is great, right? It, it, it was really, you know, they, they call it the missing. Uh, package manager, and I, and I think it's great. I use it every day um, to install every tool that I can think of, you know, anywhere from Git to Mongo, I mean, you name it, Rock Tools, all that good stuff. So uh, for your Ruby development environment, this is what you need. You need, for Debian, you need Perl, Bison, build extension, and all that stuff. For OS X, you need Xcode, but not 4.2. Has anybody installed 4.2? Yeah, so you tried to compile something? It didn't go well. Yeah, it's not going to work. Uh, I mean, not well, anyway. Um, and they both need, need Vim, of course. Does anybody use Vim? Vim users? Yes. Textman users, don't raise your hands. Um, <laughs> I kid, I kid. It's OK, I guess. Emacs. Emacs, yeah. Emacs. Oh, Emacs, there you go. <laughs> I forgot. Um, you know, MySQL, Postgres, all that stuff. Um, and, you know, Git, of course. The biggest thing is RVM. Does anybody not know what RVM is? Cool. So RVM is uh, Ruby Version Manager, and it's a command line tool. It allows you to install multiple interpreters. Uh, it manage, manages sets of gems per Ruby version. And I'll, get, I'll go more in depth into that in a, in a second. Uh, you can perform operations over install interpreters and gem sets, right? Here, here's what it looks like when you don't have RVM, right? And you do a gem list. This is back. It's a gem list for different projects. And the reality of it is that there's a lot of Rails projects out there dating back from, I don't know, I started in when it, before it was one, I guess. But for for instance, this this guy has there. Rails 1.2.6, 2.2.2, 2.3.5, 2.3.8, 2 and if you anything, I think before 2.3.5, you really didn't have Bundler, so you had to mess with you know that whole rake, gems install, and all that other good stuff. Um, so what RVM allows you to do, uh, coupled with gem sets, um, it allows you to isolate uh, all your gems per uh, you know in a, on a project basis, and of course. Bundler does that, but what, what we use, uh, th I think of Bundler as a way for me to populate my gem set, right? Uh, and again, I'm, I'm going to show you how all this stuff works in a demo, because I'm that brave. Uh, a live demo. So you have a per project RVMRC that you can say, hey, this project individually, when I CD into it, I want you to use this particular version of Ruby, this patch level, and this is the, the gem set that you're going to use, right? And then everything is hermetic, everything's right there, isolated. Um, this is supposed to work. I haven't really gotten it to work. I wrote a little shell script um, that basically iterates through every um, RV, every Ruby version that I'm interested in, right, and then runs your specs. Uh, and I'll show you why it's important to, to be able to, especially when you're writing a library, why it's important to, um, to have, to test it, to run your tests uh, in, different, in different Ruby versions, right? Um, and the other thing, my favorite, one of my favorite things is that you can just wipe out the RBM directory or RBM implode and start over. And the same thing with, with, with Homebrew, really. Actually, um, at HashRider, we have uh, iMac pairing stations. And one time I, had, I was having some issue with Postgres. It wasn't doing something or other. And what happened, what I did was, sorry, what I did was um, I just copied user local from one iMac to the other one. And since they were exactly the same hardware, everything worked just fine. So uh, that's the cool thing, that the flexibility that Homebrew and, and RVM gives you, right? 
So, demo time. Hey, here we go. Uh, so hopefully this will you'll be able to see. That's my son, by the way. He's 11 months old. His name's Rowan. All right. Oh, now I need this to be mirrored. Or not? Can you guys see that all right? All right, cool. So uh, let me show you. So Hitch is a uh, gem that I wrote that basically allows you. Let me show you what it does first. So if I want, if I'm when we're pair programming, right, I'm, and I want to say uh, I'm going to Hitch the room lug and say I'm going to pair with Uncle Bob. Right, and then it's going to ask me who Uncle Bob is. I say yes. And then it creates this. Uh, you give it a, a, a group, like minus a hash rocket, so dev plus the Ruby mug and Uncle Bob. And what then you, what you can do then is you take that email address and you go to Gravatar, and then you take a picture with Uncle Bob that you're pairing with him, you know. And then you add that picture, so whenever you uh, push this to GitHub, your little picture will show up there of, you know, the pair that worked on this stuff. So that's what Hitch does, right? Um, no big deal. We use it a lot um, because we pair program all the time. So I just had a little um, um, sample here that I want to say, hey, I want to write a method that's, that gives me a number of pairs, right? Um, and here's a method, very simple. <coughs> You know, the subject, um, it, should be, it should equal to the right number of pairs. The implementation is count, right? So if I just, if I say, uh, first let's, let me show you something. This is my RVMRC file. And basically you tell it, I want this to be the default, right? I'm going to default to running Ruby 192 uh, with the pass level 290 and at Hitch is how you would say, this is the gem set that I want it to be in. Um, all this other stuff is just RVM stuff. Um, okay, so if you see here, Ruby dash V, it's that. So if I run rate spec, that test is going to pass fine, or so I would hope. Now, um, I wrote this little shell script that basically iterates through the Ruby versions that I'm interested in, 1.8.6, 1.8.7, 1.9.2. 1 right? And it's going to, if it, if it doesn't have Bundler installed, it's going to install Bundler, and it's going to Bundle install. It's going to remove some stuff, you know, when it's already installed, right? And then it's going to run rate spec for that particular um, uh, Ruby version, right? Cool. So once that's there, And then I say, let's run this. It's going to run in 1.8.6, 1 and it failed. Does anybody know why it failed? Because count in 1.8.6 uh, wasn't a method on array. It was only until 1.8.7 that it got introduced. So uh, it's still running 1.8.6 because it's bundling and all that stuff. So as I keep talking, so. So this is the power, right, of having, of being able to have multiple versions of Ruby as you're writing your your um, library, right, and then you can test it so so you can make sure that it works in one point eight six, or you know I could add J Ruby to this, uh, Rubinius, whatever, right? It's it's what you're interested in in supporting as a library, and uh, you know I think it's because of the internet that this thing's taking forever. Maybe I should stop my torrent. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm not running any torrents. Um, I, I promise you this is going to pass eventually. <laughs> so, how about the Yankees? <laughs> oh, wait, the, the Cardinals won, right? Because you guys are really proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> you can clap, it's okay. <laughs> Cardinals. Woo! Baseball. Um, <laughs> in my country, we play basketball. 
No, we don't. We play soccer. Uh, I couldn't play soccer because my shoes are, my feet were too big, so I couldn't find cleats. Of course, demos always never work. Uh, so don't worry. So the point was that the first one is the one that failed, and that's the one that I wanted to show you, right? The other ones pass if um, if I just if I just run Drake spec. Sorry. Let's see RBM info. Yeah. So now. If I just want to break spec with this one, oh. cannot find anything. <laughs> this is part of a part of the talk, so you guys can see the kinds of troubles you run into <laughs> um, when you're developing. So it's not it's not exactly perfect, but 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 the idea is you know that the, the possibilities are endless, right? As far as uh, what you can support and what you can do. Uh, and also how you can start over very quickly. That's that's the biggest thing. Now, um, how did I get to this? How did I set up all this stuff? I have a blog post that I wrote a, a while back uh, for Snow Leopard and Ubuntu that I've recently updated for Lion and also for Ubuntu. Um, uh, and the what I just wrote just a few days ago is a shell script that basically takes everything that the blog post does and installs it for you. Um, and basically all you need to do is have Xcode installed and you just run this shell script and it asks you a few questions and then it installs everything for you. So uh, one of the biggest reasons that, that of why I wanted to be I wanted to speak closer to the beginning of the of the of the conference is that you know as we go through the conference you guys you know can approach me and we can talk about your Ruby development environment. Uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that's the problem. It's fetching something from the very slow internet. Um, so, that's basically it. Does anybody have any questions? Yes? Right, um, it, because I'm bundling, right? So the question is, uh, there is an RVM uh, command that allows you to run, you, you just say RVM and then you, you comma separate the versions that you're interested in running and then you say specs or whatever else and it will run that. The, the, the reason why I did it this way was because Specifically, you need to we need to bundle because I'm using Bundler to make it easy to like I, like I said to to populate my temps. So that's that's really what it boils down to, right? I say, hey, is is Bundle install change to this version and this gem set is Bundler install it, not install it, and then Bundle install on each one of them, right? And then um, and then after you're done with that, then rate spec. Right inside of that for a bit. So that's why really we, I, I did that. Um, so it's kind of, you know, there's probably better ways of doing it now, but that's, this is a, a few weeks actually uh, behind. Uh, so just for the for the Windows guys, there's a there's a there's a tool called Pick, I think, that does the same thing for uh, for Windows. Uh, but I would just suggest you, you just use Linux or or OS X. <laughs> That's just me, though. Um, what else was I going to say? Any more questions? What was the change with Xcode 4.2? I have no idea what really. I think it has to do with the GCC version. Like, uh, it, it it wouldn't compile Mac Vim at all. It wouldn't compile like, a, a lot of the of gems. It was just. Uh, <laughs> No, I didn't. Okay, you and I can talk later. Did then you I set an environment variable to use a different version of GCC? And I tried that. I tried that. That worked for me. Uh, but I, I want to try what uh, Olaf was saying. Uh, so yeah. So anyway, as 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 the uh, conference goes goes by, just uh, feel feel free to just kind of approach me, and we can talk about your Ruby development environment. Um, and then, um, 
Thank you. Sorry, that.